Yeah, I think what you're saying, though, is huge. I think both of you guys were bringing up the point. Kara, going back to your testimony and saying, like, you know, in China, when you feel like, dang, everything isn't working out, you felt God made his presence to all of you. You know, I'm here with you, uh, guiding you through this trip. Yeah. And I think that's huge because Drake is touching on that. That it's not that we just live and we just decide to do things because we feel like it. Mm-hmm. But not only has God given us this heavenly perspective that gives us peace and does give us something we can for, but also God has left us here alone. He's here with us too. God Right. No, that's my those are our kids messing with the timer. Right. But you know, I think I think it's huge because that God is here with us, and we need to know that we don't serve a distant God, but God that's here today. You know, I think a lot of Christianity is a set of beliefs that comforts us, but mm-hmm. a set of beliefs that's comforting doesn't go that far when things actually get bad. That Come on. Pretty quick. Yep. But we hear Dre talking about, listen, we're led by God. God's going to communicate to us and God's but it also cares us man, that man, when I felt like everything was wrong, I wasn't even thinking about God. But God mm-hmm. came in and opened the door for me. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's I think that's huge. I think that's something that we should all be aware of and share with you that this isn't just a set of beliefs, this isn't a moving a world because we're too weak in order to survive Come on. Because the truth is we're all flawed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, flawed. Yeah. We're all flawed. We're all flawed. Mm-hmm. Tell you, I was hungry, <laughs> and he fed.
but, um, but what I do know, for sure, is that God created us, and he knows how to reach you. I remember we were talking to one of our youth members from a long time ago, he was just stressing about, like, how do I know what God's will is for my life, like, how do I continue to be? It's like, like, how do I know I'm not going to miss him? Like, what if I do it wrong? You know, like, do you hear yourself? Do you hear what you're saying? How do I? What if I? You know? It's like you're focusing it all back on self, on yourself, on I, I, I. But you have to trust that God knows you. And he'll be able to communicate in a way that you will understand. It's ironic because, you know, it's like that stress of missing God causes mm. us <laughs> in some ways to miss it. That's good. The focus is all on my ability That's and not good. at all on his faithfulness to lead his children. Because mm. he promised that he would lead us. Oh. And it was funny, so I had another conversation with a friend. I was like, man, like, God's just not speaking to me. And I'm like, yeah, when's like the last time you read your Bible? Sometimes we're looking for God to answer our prayers, uh, but the fact is He's not saying anything because He's already given you an answer in His Word. Uh, but sometimes we just we know what His Word says, and we don't like what He's calling us to. Uh, so we say, "I'm waiting for Him to speak to me. <laughs> like, give me a word to know what to do." Ooh. Like, sister, He already told you. You're just running from me. <laughs> Man. But that's also like community is so important too because it helps keep uh, ourselves biblical too. You know, because mm-hmm. in community you can be like, "Man, I feel like the Lord is saying such and such and such." And the community of faith can be like, "Man, like I agree with that." You know, like that's with the word and agreement and spirit. And then other times it'll be like, "Dude, I don't know that." <laughs> That's real good. It brings up a point that I really liked about this. We've been talking about this. There's this tension between this humanistic view of having some confidence in self. And then there's that other end of only trust. Oh, God will take care of it. And many Christians even fall into those categories of God will take care of it. As all of this crazy stuff is happening or we got to do something. But when we stand up with either we got to do something or if we don't do it, it's pride because it's still based on self, whether it's self-deprecating or if it's um, pushing oneself up all the time. And it it's still self-centered and not Christ-centered. And we're called to be Christ-centered in him. And I think when we go self-centered or when we go, yeah, when we go self-centered, we find ourselves in fear. Then we, if we go self-centered the other direction, we find ourselves in pride and arrogance. We can fix this. And God's looking like, I didn't ask you to fix this. I told you to get in there and ride. Partner with me. Yes, do your part. But don't think that you're all it. That you're all, I'm reminded of, was it Elisha? No, it was Elijah running after he just was used by God to exact judgment on the prophets of Baal and kills 450 of them. King Ahab and Jezebel are ruling and reigning over Israel. And Elijah has spoken a word that it will not rain for three years. And the rain stops at this man's statement because he's partnered with God, not because Elijah was amazing, but because God chose Elijah to speak these things through. God led him and guided him not to be afraid of 450. Oh, you don't have to do too much math and you don't have to be good at math to realize 450 should whoop one every time. But he stands up in boldness of God and God answers. But shortly after this great mountaintop experience and victory of slaughter in 450, you see him off in the text. It says that he was hiding from Jezebel in this cave, hiding from a woman 
one woman after he just took care of 450 men. Yes, a woman of power, and she was the queen, but he was hiding, and he was die He was so afraid that it says that he was like, there's no point in living anymore. He was having suicidal thoughts and stuff, sitting in that cave, and God speaks to him. He's like, I'm the only one left. I'm the, I'm the, it's all depending on me. There's not another prophet in it. And God's like, uh, sir, you're not that important. I've got a whole group over here that you know not of, but it's okay. Are you going to do your part? We put so much weight on ourselves. I hear too many Christians. Well, if we don't vote it in and if we don't do this and we don't stand up, for our rights and if we don't say such and such if we don't if we don't speak for our people who will if somebody won't do something who will and i get it but it's most of the time fleshly motivated if we were to talk to those people long enough from a therapeutic standpoint you'd find out underneath there was a scared person under there just i had to do something because i just it would make it made me feel better or I wasn't going to let that happen again to me. It's not based in a trust and an understanding of where we're going. Elijah didn't stand on that hill and kill 450 prophets off of a feeling. He had to be led by the spirit of God to do that. Jesus wasn't out there doing and talking to people the way that he did just because he felt like doing that. He was compelled by the spirit. The Holy Spirit remained on him beyond jesus you see the apostles going out in acts as we walk through it philip is led by the spirit to the ethiopian we see peter and all of the disciples speaking at a time where it didn't make sense for them to speak out about a jesus whom they just killed to speak out but they were they were given boldness and were given a love that didn't that went beyond what went beyond their feelings and their security and comfort and convenience in these times while we wait on the return of Christ, of when it is, whether you pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, pan-trib, whatever, that it all pan out, whatever, you and I have the word before us says, be ye ready. It says, I'm trying not to tie a bow on it, but at the same time, in, in uh, Second Peter chapter 3, he tells us what to do. He says, Jesus is God is not in uh second Peter chapter three. Uh, it says verse eight, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with the roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. I'm not claiming to know and we're not sitting here claiming to know all of what that means, but we can get a gist that it's all going down. And then it says in verse 11, Peter says, since all since all these things are thus to be dissolved what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness the what are we supposed to be doing living lives of holiness and godliness and we can't do it in and of ourselves he makes us holy he's the only holy one he is godly he is god and if we're out of communion with him we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Back to what you said, how we perceive ourselves in light of God and in others or with others. And he says in verse 12, he says, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God. We're to be waiting or looking forward to it, not stuck in being convenient and comfortable here in this temporal world and this is it and all i got is all i got i got a big house a big home i got a good job i got my health i'm gonna keep on working out that's not gonna do it but not just but we should be looking forward to him coming and then hastening 
the coming of the uh, of the day of God are looking forward with this uh, expectancy. Other translations say it even better that looking for Christ, that's that alertness again. Um, and it says, because of which on the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and the new earth and the heavens, meaning the sky and the universe stuff. But in a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, verse 14, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace and count the patience of our Lord as salvation. Just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you, according to the wisdom given him. And don't want to go on any more there, but can we talk a little bit more? I know some stuff popped up as we read that scripture. Go ahead, because it's like, what do we do? Word is clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And that's the thing where it's like remembering our salvation after we enjoy that and in the end it's going to work out. And that's what we press forward to do. We look forward to it. I was thinking about the day and I was thinking about it. It was crazy. Jesus said, wow, I think I don't know what you There's no way. Thank you. 
expressed through the cross, changing the priority of eternity and being able to share that with others. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think as we, I guess we should be clothed as in closing thoughts, because I think, man, I'm so on the clock. <laughs> and so, okay. uh, I know we have work, so but, yeah. A lot of people have this view of God that he's just sitting up there happy that they're suffering. Like, yeah, that's what y'all get. But he's patient. He's patiently waiting, and he wishes that none should perish. And we miss that a lot of times. I, if there's any other closing thoughts, I'm like, I'm thinking to pray for some people for sure concerning what to do and to repent from doing too much and doing too little but finding balance in being led by his spirit. I feel like some people are ready to like get on board with that. I'm convicted and challenged myself to said I want to be too complacent, yet not ahead of God. I want to be smack dab in the middle of God's will on what I should be doing for my life. Not so focused on getting, you should be running for president. You should be out there in the, that's not my role, but maybe I should be praying for somebody to be doing that. In voting, be who's praying before they vote? Most of the time, the people are like God said, and God, who prayed, or did you just line up with your 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 political party and just check 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 check? You don't even know the people on the ballot, but you just check 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 because those are my people. No, our people are kingdom people. Do you pray before you vote? We're supposed to be praying before we go there. We're supposed to be praying before these decisions, checking what God is saying. So, that's... Prayer is it 
What is it that we should be doing in the waiting? I think we've handled a lot of it, not necessarily exhaustive, but what we have pulled and extrapolated from Scripture is that we ought to be busy within the world being the light, the salt and light. We ought to be in within the church, a community supporting and holding each other accountable. We ought to have communion with God individually as well as corporately by getting in our word, getting in prayer, getting in worship in the presence of God, because it is the spirit of God who leads us. And we're not to be led by our flesh, but we're to be led by the spirit. The flesh would include our feelings, our skin color, our region, our nation, all the things that have to do with temporal. But the spirit is eternal and he leads us to what God wants. And we have to submit and surrender our flesh and our sinful desires for what he wants. So we didn't give you the complete answer for what you should do. Maybe God will speak to you for you to run in office. Maybe he will tell you to vote for so-and-so. Maybe he's telling you to go adopt a kid. Maybe he's telling you to go and text someone. Maybe he's telling you all of these different specific things, but from his word, that's where it's the basis is on him. The foundation has to be on him, not on feelings, not on what everybody else is doing. So I'm going to pray for you, but also for us in this room, even that we not get complacent, that we not uh, lose focus on our purpose and our mission, which is number one, to be with him. And number two, be in this world and love others as he would love them. Love, you know, the great, the, the two that sums up it all. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with everything. And then love your neighbor as yourself. To love ourselves in proper perspective in Christ. So I'm going to pray that for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the discussion we've had. Holy Spirit, have your way. We say things, we're human. We say things off. We say things 
Uh, but we pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to each person that hears this and that they would have ears to hear you. Everything that we got to say that don't, doesn't line up with what you want to say, let it be forgotten. But the seeds that you want sown in their hearts, the encouragement that you're bringing through this, Lord, the, the uh, freedom and deliverance from fear and that mindset of anxiety and that freedom from that, uh, that sense of pride and arrogance that you're calling us to repent from, Lord. I pray, Lord, that those seeds be heard, that word be shared, those practical needs that were shared through us, God, that you would help those things to stick, that you would give us and give them uh, a deeper hunger and a passion for your word and for your presence like never before. Help us to hear your voice, Lord. Help us because your word says that we are your sheep and we hear your voice. You're not hiding it from us. We are open and we want to do it your way. We don't want to do it some other person's way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And we we thank you, Lord, that we will go and do what you've called us to do by your Holy Spirit empowering us to be a witness first where we are at home and beyond. God, help it start with us. Let the revival begin in us, Lord. We love you. We praise you. Amen. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to this discussion podcast whatever you want to call it and we thank you then we pray that if you were blessed that you were shared with others um and we'll see you on the next one amen